On to the second part of the uranium excursion. Today's mission is to collect uranium minerals. But how do you go about it? Since I'm writing this script afterwards, some tips here are lessons I've learned during my first uranium prospecting trip. I packed my bag with bags, lots of bags, sealable bags, trash bags, small ones, big ones, whatever. These are for samples which should only be handled with gloves. Bring more than you think you'll need. Three to four pairs of gloves per bag. A measuring device. Thanks to Radio Code for sponsoring this video. I'm packing my Radio Code 103. My friend has one too, alongside a Gamma Scout. Additional tools: a geologist's hammer, a mason's hammer, a splitting wedge. Courtesy of your geoscientist friends, who should bring this along? Small items like zip ties, scissors, tweezers. A UV lamp, disinfectants, a first aid kit, sunscreen, I don't need to tell you how to pack for a regular trip, and of course, snacks. Lots of snacks. Clothings, shoes, sturdy shoes, and a spare one for the car, you don't want to drag contaminated dirt back with you. Long pants, even if it's hot, you'll appreciate the protection, safety goggles, and FFP3 masks. Several. And a jacket. The destination is Schramberg with a car generously provided by Marvin's mom. I'm not a good driver. It's important to not just go somewhere in the black forest, but to search ahead of time using tools like Mindart and Google Earth to find areas where uranium is likely. Waste rock piles are relatively easy to locate from aerial images. Also check accessibility. Can you even get there? Remember you need to haul several kilos of sample material back with you. We went in early August 2024, a day before it, it rained. This was ideal because the rain minimized the risk of radioactive dust, making the use of masks less necessary. Tesh Tastich addressed this in his video seven years ago, which I like this video very much. Marvin put his radar coat in a bag and attached it to a stick, setting the alarm to 50 CPS or 1 microsievert an hour. In this region, with lots of granite, the background level is around 20 CPS. In our nuclear lab it's much lower, for example. We continued walking until the radar coat reacted. We were looking for uranium, which tends to be present in higher concentrations in granite. Usually this means searching for exposed granite rock. Sandstone, for instance, is not useful. We found some loose granite along the way and ventured off the beaten path. Levels of 0.28 microsieverts an hour were relatively high compared to what I usually see. But that's typical in granite areas. I was curious about the different textures of the rock, so I asked my geoscientist's friend to explain that to me. Is this is jetzt ein Stück. Stück aus dem Aufschluss mhm. und wir haben jetzt zwei unterschiedliche Gesteinsfarben. Aber man sieht diese Färbung, diese rötliche oxidierte Färbung, stammt eben von den Verwittungsspuren und hier oben sehen wir die Pilze. Mhm. Also das, das kannst du auch mit dem Finger abwischen und merkst, da hat sich irgendwas drauf abgelagert, irgendwas Biogenes. Wenn wir den jetzt aufschlagen. Sehen wir das frische Gestein? Ja, schön. We found fresh granite and hope for higher uranium concentrations lower down. Snacks are definitely essential. Do these contain season 137? Marvin really found something radioactive. I wasn't measuring the fresh outcrop yet, but further That's down the readings the were really strong. Messen wir da. Cutting through thorns, the scissors proved to be very helpful. With a UV lamp we observed the beautiful fluorescence of uranium minerals. Whether the fluorescence was due to uranium or fungi is unclear. It requires further testings. 
we measured up to 30 microsieverts an hour, which is quite significant. We collected these samples and noting the geology suggested that the vein might extend further downhill. However, this was a bit speculative and we couldn't determine the vein's depth on site. So why did I not bring an expensive alpha scintillation counter? Natural uranium contains all the isotopes of the uranium radium and the uranium actinium decay series in a radioactive equilibrium. Even though uranium primarily emits alpha radiation, its decay products, which have accumulated over hundreds of thousands of several million years, emit gamma radiation. So small crumbs of rocks will either have negligible activity, which doesn't concern me, even health-wise, or significant activity, in which case gamma emitters will be present, making the detection possible with a gamma scintillator like the radio code 103. The radio code can also detect beta radiation, but it's primarily intended for gamma spectroscopy. After the first sight, we wrapped things up at half past 1 pm and continued to Grube Sophia the next day. We parked at Kloster Wittischen and within 5 minutes of walking, the radio code reacted again. We couldn't pinpoint the uranium, but planned to investigate further on the way back. Using zip ties and a stick, I've mounted the device for easier use. I didn't put the radio code in a bag because I wanted to have nice footage, but otherwise I would highly recommend you put it in a bag and then zipping it onto a stick. On the first pile we found barite, barium sulfate, which often accompanies uranium. Unfortunately, we didn't find any uranium here. At the next pile, initial measurements were a bit more promising, so we searched a bit more intensively. often taking a handful of material and re-measuring, confirming that the activity really was in the sample we took with our hands. If you happen to find a handful full of small rocks and you are not sure which one of them is really the radioactive one, you can take one, bring it with your thumb and index finger closer to the detector and if this one isn't active, you can throw it out and get the next one and so on and so on. And finally, you will find the piece that's responsible for the radioactivity that you just early measured in general over your hand. After digging, it's a good idea to wipe down tools and shoes on grass or moss to reduce contamination. We also investigated reports on a nearby mine shaft, but couldn't enter because the entrance was flooded after the rain. Since I just visited a mineshaft or the entrance of a mineshaft, you expect this area to be quite rich in certain minerals. And this was in fact the case. The Grube Sophia or anything around this was and is still quite a popular producer when it comes to barium sulfate and calcium fluoride. In the earlier days, this mine was also quite popular when it comes to arsenic, nickel, cobalt, silver, uranium, but the main focus laid on cobalt. Back in the lab, I unpacked my findings and set aside the larger interesting box and dealt with the annoying crumbly soil. Active pebbles were located using the Como 170 detector. Less active pieces that were mostly granite were placed in a centrifuge tube, which I might use for teaching later on. The rest was stored away. Larger rocks still covered in dirt were cleaned under running water. Minimal activity may wash away, but uranium minerals that really dissolve easily wouldn't have survived in nature for long enough for us to collect them. And how do you go about the contaminated bag? So what about the bag that holds the material? Do they become radioactive due to radon daughters? I measured with the radio code and the Como 170 and didn't find anything. 
for private collectors. If it's not measurable, it's fine to dispose of it in household waste. I even turned the bag inside out in case of a pure alpha contamination. In a professional lab setting, you would then go further to investigate whether it's really contaminated in very slight quantities in terms of collecting a long lasting gamma spectrum. I don't. After removing the active pieces, wrap the rest in paper and gloves and place them in a bag, wipe off any signs of radioactivity and dispose of it in a gray bin. In Germany, the gray bin is for anything that is not plastic, paper or biodegradable. So rocks and anything else just goes into the gray bin. In this case, it's just rocks. I mean, it is just rocks. Mostly granite. Finally, of course, I wanted to show you the fluorescence of these minerals. While some uranium minerals fluoresce, many non-radioactive substances do too. And some highly radioactive minerals like uraninite or pitch blender do not fluoresce at all. So fluorescence is not a reliable indicator of radioactivity. This was a really rough overview on what to consider when collecting uranium minerals. In Germany it is legal to do so since uranium containing minerals do not legally count as being radioactive. Of course take caution, be careful, use common sense and with that being said thank you for your attention and goodbye. A special thanks goes to the Working Group of Analytics and Fundamental Nuclear Chemistry from Dr. Eric Strupp and the Division of Nuclear Chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.